Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at the Condu disc for the final time. And this is one which was fitted in some time ago. That was actually back in April, and it's now August, so it's been in for around four months or so. And this is the picture when it was put in in the ground there. That was just after it had been put there with the conductive concrete around it as well. And uh, just immediately after doing that, we got a reading of 23.5 ohms. And that was literally just a place in the ground with the uh, concrete on the top. And then uh, after it had been filled in and the soil compacted, uh, a couple of days after that uh, we got this reading which was 19.9. And we've seen those in the previous episodes, both which are linked in the usual places. Now another point here which uh, several people commented on in the comments for those other videos was that on the first test we actually put the leads like this sort of going away down there onto the grass area between those vines. And then on the second one, we actually put them a different direction. But uh, this doesn't actually make any difference because the whole point of using a two wires, well, it's actually a three lead test because obviously one is the thing you're testing. But the whole point of having those is that the actual temporary electrodes don't make any difference to the reading you're going to get. That's generally the whole point of having two of them. And therefore, it doesn't matter whether they're in this direction or the other direction or in fact any direction at all. The only real restriction is that the temporary electrodes have to have a reasonably low contact resistance with the ground, otherwise you just don't get any readings at all. But uh, it doesn't really matter exactly where they are or what the actual resistance of those is. So we're not actually measuring that, it's not particularly important at all. However, for uh, completeness we're going to put the test electrodes in pretty much the same place as we did on the first test. So this uh, picture here is back in April, when we had the leads just stretching out down there. And this is where they are today which is, say, in mid-August, so around four months later. Obviously there's a lot more green on the uh, vines there and things, but uh, they're in pretty much the same positions that I could get. So uh, we'll see what we can have on this particular occasion. Now this is the actual arrangement here. The electrode uh, hole there is actually towards the left of this picture, where they've got those uh, two boxes on the wall and the toolbox there. Uh, here's a closer view. Uh, basically that's where that hole was previously. The only difference is here now, other than it being filled in, is we've got a uh, connection box on the wall there, which is where the lead from the conduit disc comes up and is then connected to another one. That basically goes across to the right there, and it goes through the back of that socket onto the other side of the wall and then through to the consumer unit elsewhere in the building. That is a double socket there, but it's not actually connected to this disc uh, directly. It just happens to pass through the back of that. Well, it's a convenient point to go into the building. Now here's a quick look at the connection. So that's our green lead there coming from the conduit disc in the ground. i uh, just temporarily disconnected it from the installation. And that comes over to the same testing device I had before, the Mega MFT 1741. And there's those two leads going off down there, the yellow one and of course the red one far away as we can get it. So basically the same positions we had previously. So uh, come out to this then and see what sort of leads we get. And again, this takes uh, a few seconds to actually do this. So this time, 16.1 uh, ohms. So again, that has fallen even further. And bearing in mind, this is after a period of fairly dry weather. So uh, that's uh, fairly promising. Now we'll just have a look where these electrodes, uh, or the temporary ones, are actually placed. So say so there's a the yellow one pretty much uh, where I actually put it previously. And uh, I can actually move this to a slightly different position. This is somewhat closer to the testing device. As you see here, the ground is rather hard as it's rather dry and not particularly uh, good there. But uh, anyway, we'll just shove that in. Now there may be some variation here depending on the distances between them. But again, the actual resistance of those electrodes isn't particularly relevant. So uh, we should get something fairly similar to what we had previously. Okay, so there we are, so 15.5, so that's actually slightly less, but uh, again, it's all within the realms of the uh, error of measurements for this particular arrangement. So again, around 16 ohms or so. So we'll try a third one again, we'll just move the electrode again further away this time. So again, there we are, just a bit uh, different position there. And the idea is you do several of these, just sort of various distances to get an average just to avoid any uh, possible problems with where they're going into the ground. And so it's mainly the distance between that 
and the other temporary one and the one you're testing which makes the difference. So this will be the third and final test we're doing uh, on this one. Again 16.1 so we can say around 16 ohms uh, for that. So that's around a 20% reduction since we put it in initially. It was around 20 ohms there. And now we're down to around 16. And again, that's four months later with a period of fairly dry weather. So that seems uh, perfectly acceptable. Certainly no problems with that. And that's well below any kind of requirements for pretty much any RCD device to actually trip. Now there is a socket outlet uh, right next to this. So I've reconnected the Earth uh, Condi disk there. And we're just going to do so, a couple of tests on this socket outlet with the power on. So uh, first of all we're just going to use the uh, high current test between line and neutral. The voltage there is 234 so that's perfectly normal. And then we can see the impedance is about 0.55 ohms. And then we'll try the line to protective earth so this will be a low current test because there's RCDs on this circuit. And uh, we should see what we get. So we're getting there 22.5 ohms. Now of course that is a lot higher than 16, that does not mean that the circuit has a huge resistance of something in the region of 6 ohms, because of course obviously it doesn't. Uh, but what we're actually testing here is of course not just the earth electrode, we're testing the full earth loop impedance path. And this is a TT installation, so the actual supply comes from a transformer on a pole some way down in the next field. So we're actually testing the electrode at that location as well, and this one. And of course the current flowing through that whole path, including a bit of copper as well. So although it's obviously higher than the individual electrode we got there, that's to be expected because say we're not just measuring one, we're measuring the one at the actual transformer point as well. But again, that's perfectly fine. Absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. So that is it for this video, and until next time, thanks for watching.